Hey guys, welcome to another one of our little videos. Um, in this one I'm going to talk about debt to income ratios. That's something that's been getting a lot of publicity lately and I've even written a few blog posts on it. Um, so, so here goes, look, um, the Reserve Bank has obviously indicated it wants uh, debt to income ratios uh, in its armory and it's, it's asked the government for that. That's still a discussion point and, and nothing's happened as of yet. Um, what is the debt to income ratio? Basically, the Reserve Bank wants to restrict how much you can borrow as a percentage of your income. Um, overseas, uh, it's been as low as four and a half times income. I think the reality in the New Zealand context is it might be somewhere between five and six times income. Now, for a first home buyer, um, to be honest, that's that's about where it should be because um, most first home buyers we see can't borrow more than four to five, uh, well sorry, five to six times income. Uh, it's really getting genuinely unaffordable um, above those sort of levels. The, um, I think the issue with debt to income ratios uh, is more that it's a blunt instrument and it, 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 it as a blunt instrument or a sledgehammer hitting a nail the reality is it creates collateral damage uh, and there will be plenty of situations out there where people are legitimately at higher debt to income ratios and uh, it's not necessarily bad business and it could be for example that we just can't verify their income to the degree that might be required by the legislation but the income's there. Um, so it shows there's a high debt to income ratio when in reality it isn't. Uh, there could also be situations where people are asset rich, um, they've got uh, lots of assets, um, but for whatever reason in the short term they don't necessarily have the income. The group that I think would be most disadvantaged by it uh, is where people are on maternity leave, uh, particularly in the Auckland market and they're dropping to one income. Now it sounds kind of silly, um, but you know the reality is when people are on maternity leave, they simply wouldn't pass debt to income ratios, even though um, you know they intend to go back to work uh, in the next sort of year to 18 months. And that, look, it's just an example of of how applying a blunt instrument can create sort of these outlier cases where people can get sort of caught in a crossfire. Um, but generally speaking, I, I don't see debt to income ratios as a big issue. Um, across owner-occupied property. It'll be really interesting to see whether or not the Reserve Bank would put it across investment property. That's something quite different to what they've done overseas. Overseas debt to income, income ratios have only been applied across owner-occupied property, um, but our Reserve Bank, in terms of the conversations that I've been having, uh, is suggesting that it is something that they would look to put across property investors. The other side of this thing that I think is worth bearing in mind is that the banks have already significantly tightened up credit. We've got 40% LVR restrictions, uh, they're working quite effectively, uh, and the banks themselves have already tightened up credit in terms of running um, you know, um, high servicing calculations against property investors and owner-occupied borrowers, uh, restricting use of foreign-based income. There's a lot of things that they've been doing uh, that have already effectively tightened up the credit markets. From my perspective, you're seeing the results of that in the market now. Um, Auckland house prices have stabilised. Uh, in their November result, Barfoot suggested that house prices are down a little bit. And, and I wouldn't um, be surprised to see that continue for a few more months um, as the market settles down. So that's it for me. I'll talk to you soon. Again soon. Cheers.